elk, elk backstrap, elk ground meat, and onion, celery, bell pepper, story, how you kill fresh elk, mushrooms. Elk in Iowa. It was a road kill we found on the way up here. Temperature was real cold, we thought it'd be. Give us something to eat. And Bill, Hello, elk. You ready to ready to go out and tell us a, a fascinating story? A fib? Oh no, man. Classic Bill Mitchell hunting story. <laughs> Another one, two years in a row. I'll get this. <laughs> That's right. We didn't think we could top the jackknife buck, but I don't know. You, I think you might have done it with this deal here. It might be good luck for you too, Bill. It did. You, you have to have, have You have to have TJ tell his part there too. Yeah, he was part of it, wasn't he? Yeah. TJ, are you there? He All right, let's on. let's go outside. Go okay, Bill. Tell okay, us we, tell us what you did yesterday. Well, we started out. We were over here, Marcel, Jeff, and I went over to the. Jackknife Hill, we'll call it now, after. And we did some scouting over there and got Jeff set up. And Marcel went up to his stand, and I come back. I was heading, heading back into town. You had to go pick up the kids from school, huh? Yeah, I had to go meet the kids. They get out at well, quarter after three, I guess it was. Quarter after three, three thirty. And in the town, I see this buck heading. Coming off the hillside. Yeah, he came off the hillside and was heading back to like he's going to head back behind these big round bales, this farmer. And so I pulled in the driveway and tried to intercept him. Got back there and waited a little while and he didn't come out, didn't come out. I think he laid down for a minute, really. And then uh, I had my crossbow, got that out, cocked it, got an arrow in it, went back and waited by the end of the bales of that, and the buck never came, never came. Probably he finally jumped up and stood up on this. Little hump couldn't have been 20 yards away, probably. And I pulled up and took a shot at him, and I missed it then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then he ran up on the hill, and I cocked, so I was cocking and got another arrow in it. He ran up on the hill, I looked up, and he stopped about, well, I suppose it's 35 yards anyway. And then I pulled up and shot, and I stuck an arrow on you. Let me show you there. Must have been this one right here. Yeah, stuck it in there and come out right here. Stuck right to there. And he went down, slid down the hill, slid down the end there right to me actually. But he's You broke him down, huh? Yeah, I think his back end was immobilized because he kinda of hooked on a cedar tree. But his front end was up and he was jumping and crashing and kicking. Well then I never had no more arrows left, no more broadheads. I had two target arrows left. So I shot both target arrows into him, <laughs> into his neck right here, here, here and here maybe. I think I stuck one in there and one here. And that didn't do anything but make him mad. <laughs> Kept jumping around. Well, then I didn't have any arrows left. So I jumped in my truck. I was about a mile and a half out of town, jumped in the truck, and ran into town, and the kids were home. TJ <laughs> and Kelsey. TJ, get in the picture then, buddy. And so they wanted to come along out. I grabbed my other bow. My uh, compound bow, I grabbed that, I had two arrows in that. Came back out and he was, I thought he was dead because he was all stressed out, but we pulled in there off the truck and he get back up again. Look at us, shaking his head. So That's a I fine buck. I pulled back and shot one in from behind. <clears> I hit that one right through here. Down and come out, we'll miss his spine and that, it still didn't kill him. So there I got three arrows sticking in him, or four I guess it was. Gee. Four arrows sticking in him. Yeah, and this one here was in and out. I think this one here was in and out and it was sticking out. So I got behind him where he couldn't see me. I reached up and I grabbed that one arrow and crossbow arrow. Wiggle a little bit, he didn't move, so I jerked it out quick. Got that in, stuck it back in the crossbow. Got behind him again when he quit jumping around. And then I shot and I think I drilled him right down through here somewhere. He got him right in the spine. And then he went down. And we measured his horns. He's got a 17-inch inside spread and a 19-inch outside spread. He's a fine deer. Now, TJ hit him over the head with a club after that, too. Did you, TJ? Yeah. You smacked yeah. him in the head? <laughs> Who helped load him in the truck? Me. What'd you do? Um, you picked him up, undo. Well, we got his head up on the back of the tailgate, and TJ grabbed here, and Kelsey grabbed on the other one. And this other little girl was hanging on to Kelsey's arm. 
And I was trying to lift the back end up and get him over center. But <laughs> finally got him slid in there. I think it's only, that's probably an only year and a half old deer, eh? I don't know, you know, he's, he's not very good. He he's not his body certainly is not as big as that jackknife deer, but but man he's just he's a he's a thick deer and his rack is better. That's a better rack. Hey, you're the dentist here. Well, his teeth. Uh, I, yeah, I'd have to cut his cheeks wide open to check out his teeth. Golly. See if you can hold his head. Can you hold his head up, Bill? Kind of rigged. Get over there, Tim, and see. Get his head up there. He's kind of heavy yeah, duty. Yeah, right there in the sun. That'll do. See, he's got all bark all over his horns there. He's been scraped from the oven pretty good. Katie, come here. That's something else, man. See how his antlers kind of flat yeah. out? Flat out when he gets up. Sure do. Good look. Though. Yeah, that's a nice buck for sure. That's great, man. Awesome. Always action up here in Iowa, man. That's good. That looks good. We got something to look for next year, see what kind of a deal we can pull off here. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you. And this trip's early yet. We just started. Yeah, we just started. That's right, man. And well, actually, you know, actually we had um, Jeff stuck a dough and lost it. I passed up a six-point buck at five yards. I could have shot, but he was just a young little buck. And then yours there, I mean, we had a heck... Yeah. yeah, he saw a buck at his stand. Yeah, right. And a buck, I saw a yeah. Buck yesterday. And Tim had one grunting at him. I saw a buck. So we've had some morning. action already. And then we jumped Boy. to go. Just kidding. Hey, tomorrow, afternoon. Sunday, you're going to go to church tomorrow? Yeah, I got to, I think. Yeah, I didn't know we prayed hard. I got to. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to have to try and pray as hard as we did last Sunday, huh? See That's what happens right in the off, afternoon. You know, I, last night when I was away in the town, I'd see they had mass. Last night was a holy day. You forgot that, didn't you? That's, that's great. So anyway, I got thinking, I think I'll go to church tonight, I said. It, was, it wasn't even a half mile after that, and there that buck goes. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's spectacular. Well, you're you for right. you see? It ain't going to be long enough. Uh -huh. Well, we'll take four. Uh, we'll go straight up with a four. Okay. Oh, no. What's the mean? Well, we can tie our legs. Yeah. We've done this before. We'll pay more. What happened there, fellas? <laughs> Our, uh, what happened, Jeffrey? Our, 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 Too many engineers on this project. This, uh, <laughs> this fawn here was a little heavier than I was. She extended the weight limit. Nail that dog on the head, man. Also, <laughs> we both got you too. Yeah, we got to grab the deal for you. Can you reach it? Do what now? Grab that hook. Can you hang on to this? Oh boy. Got it. You did it. I thought you were going to end up hanging up there yourself. Good. I'm good. I tell you, maybe just a. That's pretty good sized dough yet. See what I mean, Tim? Well, they might try to oh, Be careful when you say something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the biggest doe I've ever killed. Killed her this afternoon. Yeah. At 5 o'clock. What busted there a while ago? It's a rope. <laughs> oh, wait, where's that other strap? Nothing broke. It just that rope broke. Huh? The one that was around the neck. Hold on. Wait a minute. Before you oh. answer, that thing's all twisted oh. up. Huh? That looks like it's got a, a little kink in the works here. Where is deck pad? Dave, what do you what do you estimate the weight to be? Well, see, I never lifted it yet. Hang on a second. Hang on a second, Dave. Well, it looks as big as a 200 pound pig. <laughs> 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 well, you got a chain on the neck. Okay. Want to go? One more rent. That weight's your hoist. That dude. Put it towards you. Put it towards you. Run your hands up. Don't worry, I got it. I got it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Wait, hold, whoop, whoop. slow down. You're gonna drive that arrow back in when you let her down. She's off the ground, man. Get yeah. the hair of her tail yeah. off of the arrow. The arrow's gonna go back in there. Let her down. Back up. Back up. Must, I'm light. blocking the light here. Oh, yeah, 160. Let's see. Uh, 160, ah. About 161. 
Dog What's wrong with this thing? I can't focus here yet. Yeah, it's 161. Oh, I know, move cool. off to the side just a little bit. That... There you go. Don't rush the camera because I'm enjoying this a lot. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, you're right. You got to read, the... the... read from the bottom up. It says 180. Yeah. <laughs> 160 <laughs> circulation in our hands. That's good. Okay. You got to fall on that, there. Oh. Got you by five pounds. Yeah, you got me. By five pounds, usually 175. 170, I think. 175. <clears throat> something like that. 190. You got me about 10 to 15 pounds, like something like that. like fish. Yeah. They get bigger. She's a big dough. She must have lost a lot. Sitting around for an hour. It's all that blood she lost, man. Yeah. No, I don't think so. Well, I guess I'll just leave this over here. I think the thing twisted on us is why we didn't have any got a, Yeah, there's a twist in it, it looks like. Not much. Is there rollers in there? Yeah, just, so you got a twist, got yeah, a twist It makes in. a big difference if there's a twist in it. There is a twist good. in it. Mm -hmm. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Pull up just a it's not working as efficiently as it can. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Nah. Put it. Put it. You got a bad rope on top. Oh, there you go. Man. Is that yeah. rope on top? It's got a half, that one that outside right. will pull it's it got a half twist, twist in it. Uh, well, she's up higher now, anyway. Yeah. Where are you going with it, dude? Right here. Car to the school wheel, see the Polaris to hold it down. Got it. Got rope on top of the hole? Is that what's rope on the bottom? No. Rope like that. <clears throat> this is the entry hole here. She was walking straight away from me. I shot her about nine or ten yards away. She'd come in and uh, <clears throat> milled around probably 25, 30 minutes. And I waited around to see if a buck was going to come in, and nothing came in, and I decided that uh, I couldn't take it anymore. I had to go ahead and shoot her. She didn't walk under a branch, and you, you thought you saw a horn? No, no. I knew, I knew there was no horns here. I'd seen it for a long time. Uh, anyway, we'll see. Where, where's the tin ring on a deer? Where the broadhead is? Where is that? And this is the old buck blaster. He put her down inside of 25 yards. <clears throat> I hit her way back, but she's walking, she walking straight away. And uh, I wanted to get the broadhead down into the vitals. So it, it went in right here, and I don't know whether. Broadhead probably stopped somewhere inside the chest cavity here. And there was no exit hole. And she made two big bounds and hit the ground. She probably dead inside of 20 seconds. These buck blasters are real. I like them so far. They'll put a deer down real quick. That's for sure. You can see here. This is this is what that that buck blaster broadhead did. That's where the head stopped. You can see the size of the hole here. I can just run my hand up inside that cavity. And those things are just, just awesome damage. That's why I put the deer down so fast. She didn't make it 25 yards. This is incredible. Can, you can see it pretty well? Oh, yeah. Old Washi said, look at a hole that thing left. I know, it's unbelievable, man. It's just incredible what that, what that broadhead does. Jeez. Stops them quick. Yeah, today's a six, huh? 11.15, yeah, you must be 12.15 today, yeah. huh? Marcel, lift that leg up. Let's see what that buck blaster did, even though we got a low hit there. That leg will be stiff. Lift up that dude's leg. He stiffened up, huh? That's what that blaster did. Too low, way too low a hit. But he bled like a song on for a long ways. He ran a long way. Right there. He's a nice ten current. My best buck yet, man. I got real lucky.
them in a whole rack up where you get a look at them? Yes, sir. You got it. I would. Let's see if I can get out the shadow here. He's stiff yet, huh? Yeah, he's stiff. He's got mud all over him. November 6, 1996 in Iowa. We're going to try and get a weight on this bad boy. Cool. Turn him around there, Big Daddy. He's still hitting the ground. Oh, we got him hung. Spin him around. Can you see the weight? Uh, no. We need a flashlight or something here. Huh? Yeah. Weird, huh? Spin him around into the light. 210. 210? What you getting on there? 210. 210 pounds. So he, his body's not as big as the jackknife buck, but uh, he's got a better rack. That old left side's kind of let's, funky. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and lay him back on the rack and we'll gut him. Huh? Lay him on the rack and it's going to gut him. Uh, I think fall off the field over there. Over there. Ooh, cut you? You want to put him on the rack or? This is our second year in Iowa, New Albany, Iowa. And uh, yesterday was November the 6th. And I finally got lucky. We've been seeing a few young bucks. And, uh, Nobody, nobody saw any good racks. Okay. And yesterday afternoon at 4:20, I had some action. I, I'd set Marcel up in one of my stands on one ridge top, and then I was on another stand on the adjacent ridge. And uh, 4:20, man, I had a doe come running through the, underneath me with, with a series of bucks behind her grunting. And uh, there was a little eight pointer right on her tail, and a little, a little six, and another little eight, and. There was there was five or six bucks in there, and this this one here was the fourth or fifth one back. And I had tried whistling at some of the younger bucks to stop them, and I couldn't get anything to react. And when he came running through, I only had a little old small area that I was going to possibly get a shot in. And I whistled once, he didn't stop, and I, so I yelled. Uh, and thank goodness he stopped in the opening. They, they had a, a twig or a stick running right across the middle of his body here. So when I drew the bow back, I knew that I'd better, I'd better shoot low and try to get below that stick or, so that I wouldn't get a deflection. And uh, this is where the arrow went. It, it ended up centering the uh, left leg right here. And I was too, the shot was actually too low. But that buck blaster opened up and did a lot of damage up underneath here. Hey, come here. And uh, can you see that there? Yeah. That's what that broadhead did when it came through there. So it had a lot of hemorrhaging. And anyway, I wasn't sure whether I'd gotten the lungs or not. And I, I took a chance and I said, I'm going to get down and I'm going to go after the deer. Because I figured if I did get the lungs, I'd have walked up right on him. And I had a terrific blood trail heading down that ridge. He ran down into this bottom. And when I got about three quarters of the way down there, he and a couple other bucks were up on the, bedded up on the other hillside there and they took off running. And I knew I had just pushed him. And I thought, boy, I may have made a, a terrific mistake here. But as it turned out, I think it was okay because it, uh, by pushing him, it made him bleed and bleed and bleed to the point where he got real weak. And Marcel and I went back to the camp, got Tim and Jeff and some flashlights and batteries and all and Marcel's lantern and we got on the blood trail and trailed this song on late into the night and it, the, the blood trail was great the majority of the way we couldn't believe the deer had gotten that far but uh he finally uh he finally laid down and couldn't get up when we walked up on him I had to arrow him again to finish him and uh 
it was just pretty miraculous that it all turned out the way it did. My good friends Marcel and Tim and Jeff helped me a tremendous amount on trailing this deer. If it weren't for them, I'd have never gotten him, I'm sure. But that was real lucky for a, a kind of a poor shot and placed too low to, to still end up recovering this deer. It was pretty uh, amazing. Anyway, hopefully we're going to try to get some videotape of, uh, of a boat kill. Well, I'll try and video one of these guys in the next few days, the last few days that we're here, and maybe we'll get lucky and get a, a narrow impact on the videotape. Well, I didn't get to do my part of just hauling a deer, but that's one way to get close to them. But I should have my own this afternoon. Maybe Kevin will haul it for me. I'll give you a hand. He's good like that. I'll help you out. Good buck, though. We're proud of him.